give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look. You know, maybe some of you guys want to set up a company um, and go out and either compete with the banks or go in and um, help the banks to become more efficient, leaner. Um, so we're in that latter bucket. So I'll tell a little bit about what we do first so you got a bit of context. Duco is on a mission to um, change the way the world's uh, businesses control their data. Now that may sound very abstract, but if you think about a bank, actually it's just uh, it's a big pile of data that's stuck in disparate systems. You are trading with people who uh, record their own data. It's flowing. You need to make sure it's accurate and you're not losing anything. Otherwise, normally you lose money, you get fined by the regulator, generally problems happen. So it's a big space. And what we're actually doing right now is we're solving a problem called the reconciliation problem, which is the problem of comparing different sources of data and finding problems in a very different uh, way. Um, what we do is we, um, rather than relying on sort of um, mountains of IT, we give people who are not technologists at all a very simple browser interface that they can throw data into. We learn about it and we let them make comparisons and find problems. So. I'll give you two examples. So one might be you're an FX um, shop and you're booking trades in a back office and in a middle office. And you need to make sure that we've got in the back office and in the middle office is the same. Otherwise, the next day, um, you, you might have a loss. Uh, but on the, other, uh, on the other hand, you might just have, um, I don't know, um, an, an email newsletter that you're sending out to 4,000, 10,000 people every day. And you might want to check whether that's in line with uh, your contacts in your email address book. So we've got a comparison to do there. And for us, it's all really the same. It's just data, right? We're, we're crunching through data. We want you to um, find out if, if anything's amiss. OK, good. That's the story, right? So now I want to tell you a little bit about the go-to-market events that we've been through over the last few years. So in the beginning, um, this didn't quite look like that. It, um, it looked a bit more like this. So um, the homemade slide, oh, we've got a great idea. What if we had a cloud-based um, service that anybody could throw data into, no matter what it is, from CCPs, from exchanges, um, from their internal systems, and we'll spot breaks. And then, um, like every technology company, we went to market with a lot of technology-led sort of uh, messaging. We've got you know, statistical overlap analysis. We've got really smart, highly parallel algorithms. You know, um, we have. Things like um, auto repair, where we can make suggestions on how to fix breaks. We have, you know, natural language um, processing, natural language-based transformation of data. And you approach these businesses, and they're like, "Who cares? Right? <laughs> um, um, what does this mean? Right? This, this doesn't mean anything to my business." So there's a big learning curve up front to translate that into something that had any relevance to any business problem. And as a technology company, that's a that's a first hurdle that many people never make it over. Um, because they get so fixated on their technological achievement that uh, they never find a business problem to solve. That was the first big barrier. Um, then um, the go-to-market that came after that um, has a number of pitfalls. So we went into operations departments, and um, there's a number of ways you can go to market with B2C technology, right? One is you can go in and say, we're going to collaborate on this, right? We're going to come in, we're going to analyze your problems, you're going to help us with your vision of where the market should be. <laughs> So we went into ops departments. Now, um, <laughs> I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but um, uh, ops departments are not the places where vision normally happens, right? Um, <laughs> um, they're there to keep the bank safe and to keep it running. They're not there to change the bank, which sounds obvious in hindsight, but, uh, but actually we were really keen to engage. So we're like, you know, you know let's go into these banks and uh, let's find partners. So that cost us a lot of time because we didn't find a lot there. So actually the message from us was, well, really we want to go in with a laser focused vision of where the market should go and we should tell people where, where they should be going um, rather than asking them for it. So collaboration really didn't work very well for us. Um, the next thing is um, a really great strategy for going to market that works in the consumer world is minimum viable product. Um, I would do this anytime, right? So minimum viable product means you build a basic uh, prototype of something, you immediately throw it at the market, right? Do you, do you want this? Does this work? Do we have a business case here? Let's go. Let's build it out, right? And fail fast. That's what people want to do, fail fast. The problem with minimal viable prototype um, in, in finance is um, if it's a critical function, people don't want to buy minimum systems. Um, actually, they want fairly full-featured, uh, tried and tested systems um, that will work in all circumstances. So 
we'd go in with this reconciliation service and they'd say, oh, but does it do this workflow? Does it do this? And if it doesn't have these 10 single sign-on, right? And if it doesn't have these 10 other things, we can't even begin to use it. So that, again, that didn't really quite work. Um, and actually, this is something I see a lot, right? Um, you go in, so, oh, great. Uh, so you find a vice president or a managing director somewhere, it's like, oh yeah, we, we need that. Yeah, that's the thing we've been waiting for, right? Um, let's do a deal, right? And then um, you go out of the meeting with your, you know, it's called happy ears syndrome in, in sales circles, right? So you're like, yeah, great, yeah, we're gonna be rich. Um, um, then you find out actually, this guy th says this is really urgent, but he said the next meeting is in February. W w why is the next meeting February, right? And then there's a meeting, and there's another meeting, and then there's a big meeting, and then you're out of cash and you're dead, right? Um, so unfortunately, with, uh, with enterprise technology, sales cycles are extremely long. And it's not really the fault of the guy who was originally enthusiastic, but if you're selling people stuff for a lot of money, a lot of people get involved in the decision-making processes. And again, um, this minimum viable product strategy, might you might run out of money before you've pulled it off, right? I like to look at this a little bit like um, time dilation, right? Um, if you think about the theory of relativity, right? Here's you um, in your train um, racing past the observer and you're like, whoop, who are those guys? I, I saw them for a second and, and now they're gone. They don't exist anymore. And, and you're sitting inside the train and you're going like, why is everybody so damn slow, right? So I can't get any work done here, right? But if you get past that hurdle, then um, you get a deal on the table and then you get another six months and procurement kills you, right? Um, so actually, w it all adds up to things take a lot of time. Um, and persistence, as in the previous talk, is really quite important because it's really quite upsetting to have these sales processes going on. It's incredibly frustrating, right? You're like, it's obvious that I've got a solution for you. Just buy the damn thing and, uh, and everything takes forever, right? Um, so I guess this is us so far. We've got one customer on board in, in January 2014. We've got 28 firms on the platform. Um, good growth. So I, I didn't really just want to come here and give you a negative story, right? It's, it's possible in this market actually because of the way technology has changed to grow extremely rapidly. Um, and that's really the good news, right? You can go to market with enterprise technology in this period of time and get 28 global institutions onto a platform would have been impossible not so long ago. Um, so we just raised a series B on the back of that early success and um, we're, um, we're gonna expand globally on, on the back of it. I'm trying to think, you know, what was, uh, what was the important bit here? So. Fintech in, in capital markets, it's tough because um, you actually need a lot more capital than you think, right? Um, it, it's really tough to do without capital because you will run out of time. Um, and I do get a lot of people asking me for advice in, uh, on sort of raising investment, early stage seed investment. Um, so the advice for me there is simple. Hustle, get a POC customer, get them to pay for it um, so you can demonstrate that you can actually sell something and get some money, right? Um, the second thing was um, uh, diversify. So we almost killed ourselves because we were selling to two tier one banks initially, and those are the hardest people to sell to, right? So at some point it dawned on us that we might want to sell to some smaller firms uh, at the same time. So we went to Chicago, it's, we decided let's sell to the futures industry, let's get some FCMs on board, and, and that worked really well for us because cash started rolling in. Sell up some, you know, sell to some small firms. It shows momentum. People want to see momentum. Um, hire a salesperson um, as early as you can if you're going to do this. Um, to be fair, I think the the most successful companies I see, the founders are good salespeople. Um, so, me and the guy I hired, uh, we sold most of these deals. Uh, you have to be comfortable with that, but. You need a professional sales process. You know, you're walking into absolutely complicated political situations um, that you're going to find very hard to navigate. So I would definitely always recommend bringing something in to, to help with that. And then avoid distractions. So uh, another common thing I see a lot is you've got a great idea. Two things happen. You go into the first customer. Uh, you say, oh, I love this. Uh, can you build this other thing for me as well? And you know, 24 months later, you're a consultancy company instead of um, a fast-growing business, right? So you don't want to be there. Uh, and the other thing is, I'm really bashing consultancies here, but um, um, I get a lot of people getting distracted by consultancy companies. 
So they say, oh, we should really do a partnership, right? You know, we are, you know, insert big name consultancy companies here. And then you spend 12 months having meetings and not selling anything. Right? So um, I think that sort of um, focus on, on the customer and closing deals is, uh, has been really important uh, for us. And it's, it's helped us get the, get the capital we need. So um, hopefully um, there was something useful in there to give you an example of what it's like to, to go to market with this sort of technology. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.